Australia's Cape-class patrol boat stands as a testament to the nation's commitment to maritime security, evolving from a border protection asset into a versatile naval platform. Designed and constructed by Austal Australia, this 57.8-meter aluminum monohull vessel was initially conceived to replace the aging Bay-class patrol boats of the Australian Customs and Border Protection Service, now integrated into the Australian Border Force. With a beam of 10.3 meters and a draught of 3 meters, the Cape class is powered by twin Caterpillar 356C diesel engines, producing 5,050 kilowatts for a top speed of 25 knots and a range of 4,000 nautical miles at 12 knots. Its endurance of 28 days, coupled with a crew capacity of 18 in its standard configuration, or 32 in the evolved variant, makes it a robust tool for extended maritime operations. Armed with two 50 caliber M2HB QCB machine guns and equipped to deploy two 7.3 meter Gemini rigid hull inflatable boats, the Cape class excels in interception and enforcement tasks. The evolved version, introduced in 2020 for the Royal Australian Navy, enhances this capability with improved crew amenities, advanced sustainment systems, and greater operational flexibility positioning it as a successor to the troubled Armadale-class patrol boats, which suffered from structural issues and limited availability. The procurement of the Cape class reflects a strategic response to Australia's maritime challenges, shaped by both necessity and adaptation. In August 2011, Alstol secured a 330 million Australian dollars contract to deliver eight boats to the ABF, marking the agency's largest ever acquisition at the time and including comprehensive in-service support. Delivered between March 2013 and August 2015, these vessels, named after Australian capes, provided a significant upgrade in capability. However, as the RAN grappled with the Armadale class's operational shortcomings, additional Cape class boats were procured. In December 2015, the National Australia Bank funded two boats, Cape Forcroy and Cape Inscription, for 63 million Australian dollars, chartering them to the RAN from 2017 under a creative financing arrangement. The Evolved Cape Class program kicked off in May 2020 with a 324 million Australian dollars contract for six boats, expanding to eight by April 2022 and reaching 12 by December 2024 with a further 137.02 million Australian dollars order for two ABF boats. This escalation underscores the platform's growing importance, though not without hurdles. A 2021 Australian National Audit Office report praised the initial evolved procurement's effectiveness, but flagged delays from defective aluminum supplies inflating costs by 43.9 million Australian dollars of July 2021, a reminder of the complexities of scaling production under tight timelines. Deliveries have nonetheless progressed with the original eight completed by 2015, the chartered pair in 2017, and evolved boats arriving from March 2022 to October 2024, with four more slated for completion by 2027. The Cape class serves a multifaceted role in Australia's maritime domain, reflecting the diverse threats facing its 34,000 kilometer coastline and vast exclusive economic zone. For the ABF, it is the backbone of border protection, tasked with combating illegal fishing, immigration violations, smuggling, piracy, and maritime terrorism. Its archibs enable rapid boardings, while its endurance supports prolonged patrols across remote waters. The RAN employs the Cape class under Operation Sovereign Borders, intercepting unauthorized maritime arrivals and as an interim capability until the delayed Arafura class offshore patrol vessels enter full service. In wartime scenarios, it could secure coastal waters near the mainland, freeing larger vessels for blue water operations. Beyond these primary roles, the boats assist agencies like the Australian Fisheries Management Authority and Maritime Safety Authority, enforce regulations in offshore nature reserves, and support disaster response, demonstrating a versatility that sets it apart from more specialized platforms. 
Deployed primarily in northern Australia from bases like Cairns, Darwin, and Henderson, the CAPE class operates in coordination with aerial surveillance, satellite imagery, and radar networks under Maritime Border Command, forming a layered defense against illicit activities. Recent operations highlight the CAPE class's ongoing relevance, though detailed records post-October 2024 remain limited as of March 2025. Throughout 2023 and 2024, evolved boats like ADV Cape Willemai, Cape Pillar, and the newly delivered ADV Cape Salander bolstered Operation Resolute, intercepting illegal fishing vessels and people smuggling operations in the Timor Sea and Torres Strait. These missions often involve high-speed pursuits and coordinated efforts with P-8A Poseidon aircraft, showcasing the platform's integration into Australia's broader security apparatus. The boat's reliability was further proven during joint exercises with regional partners, such as counter-piracy drills off Queensland in mid-2024. Internationally, the Cape class's export to Trinidad and Tobago in May 2021, delivering TTS Port of Spain and Scarborough, demonstrated its adaptability, with these vessels now tackling drug trafficking and maritime crime in the Caribbean. This success reflects Austal's ability to tailor the design to varying operational needs, enhancing its reputation as a scalable solution. Looking to the future, the CAPE class is poised for both expansion and evolution. The fleet will reach 22 vessels by 2027, 10 original and 12 evolved, serving as a stopgap until the Arafura class OPVs, plagued by construction delays and cost overruns, are fully operational. Austal's sustainment centers in Henderson, Cairns, and Darwin ensure long-term support, with contracts extending at least eight years from initial deliveries and potential for renewal. In November 2023, Austal unveiled the Lethal Cape concept, proposing variants armed with naval strike missiles and autocannons to meet the RAND's Tier 2 combat requirements, a significant leap from its current constabulary focus. If pursued, this could involve retrofitting existing boats or building new ones, aligning with Australia's push for greater deterrence amid Indo-Pacific tensions. Export prospects also loom large, building on the Trinidad and Tobago deal, with Austal eyeing markets in Southeast Asia and the Pacific, where small navies seek affordable, proven platforms. However, the Cape class's future hinges on strategic decisions. Prolonged reliance due to Arafura delays could strain resources, while a shift to lethality might redefine its role entirely. Comparing the Cape class to regional competitors reveals its strengths and limitations. Indonesia's KCR-60M fast attack craft at 60 meters boasts a higher top speed of 28 knots and heavier armament with 40 millimeters guns, anti-ship missiles, making it ideal for coastal defense and short, sharp engagements. However, its limited endurance and smaller crew capacity around 20, restrict its suitability for extended EEZ patrols, unlike the Cape class's 28-day capability. Malaysia's Karis class littoral mission ships at 68 meters offer superior range, 2,000 nautical miles at 15 knots, and helicopter support, enhancing multi-role potential, but their higher cost and slower agility of 24 knots make them less practical for rapid response constabulary tasks. The Philippines' Teresa Magbanua class at 56.6 meters mirrors the Cape class's endurance of 28 days and size but lags in speed of 22 knots and lacks the evolved variant's advanced systems, giving Australia an edge in operational flexibility. New Zealand's Protector class OPVs, while larger and better armed, with 25 millimeter guns, prioritize blue water rolls over the Cape class's literal focus, with a higher price tag that limits scalability. Overall, the CAPE class excels as a flexible, cost-effective solution for Australia's vast maritime domain, blending endurance, adaptability, and sovereign construction. Its competitors may outshine it in niche areas, firepower, multi-role capacity, or range, but none match its balance of operational range, crew support, and procurement scale for constabulary missions. Challenges like procurement delays, reliance on interim roles, and the Armadale class's legacy underscore areas for improvement. 
Yet the evolved and potential lethal variants signal a platform evolving with Australia's needs. In a region marked by rising geopolitical stakes, illegal maritime activity, and environmental pressures, the Cape class remains a linchpin of national security. Its trajectory, whether as a sustained workhorse, a combat-ready asset, or an export success, will depend on how Australia balances fiscal constraints, industrial ambitions, and strategic priorities in the years ahead, cementing its status as a cornerstone of maritime capability with global potential.